Greetings adventurers and welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. My name is David and today we are in St. Louis, Missouri to check out the World Chess Hall of Fame. Right behind me here in this wonderful building, we're going to go learn about one of the greatest games of all time. Tag along with us. We're going to a place that you've never heard of before. It's Before heading inside, we simply had to stop to admire this beautiful chess piece located right outside the building. This has a Guinness World Record for being the world's largest chess piece. And located right next to the chess piece was this beautiful stone board displaying the names of people who were integral to the success and founding of the World Chess Hall of Fame. But enough of outside, let's go in. You're greeted in the entrance hall with some fantastic art that shows you words that have been commonly associated with this grand game of chess and World Chess Hall of Fame. The architecture of the building is very interesting and it was fun getting to walk up these steps and see little chess things all the way as you go up. Here were some historical announcements of different chess tournaments and things coming up, publications, specifically here in the St. Louis area. Seeing the different dates on these really drives home the fact that chess is probably one of the most ancient games there is, and it really hasn't changed all that much from how it was originally conceived. Chess has always been a very important part of culture and will continue to be so, with people getting into it every day and it truly taking a lifetime to master, it's really a game that can bring everybody together, no matter who you are. Before entering the main hall, they had a quick section that showed you the new inductees to the US and World Chess Hall of Fame, it had a little bit about them and their accomplishments in the world of chess, just to kind of get you familiar with their faces. The exhibits change out a few times a year here at the Chess Hall of Fame, and we were lucky enough to be here during a very interesting display. The same way that chess can be used as a metaphor for war, it is also used quite commonly when talking about politics. The special exhibit was all about the links between chess and politics. Which makes sense, because usually, it's two opposing sides fiercely fighting and using every strategy they can to come out on top. Here we see plenty of Cold War era with the Americans versus the Soviets. It's fascinating that something as simple as pieces of a game can actually end up being something that displays extremely important periods of history. Sometimes the war and politics kind of intermingle there, such as this one that was based on the Civil War, with figures from both sides being represented in the pieces on the chessboard. I understand why they're kept behind glass to preserve them, but it sure would have been a lot of fun to actually get to play a few rounds with some of these more colorful and finely detailed sets. The workmanship here was extremely impressive, especially the Revolutionary War ones. Of course, it also crossed into modern day, here was a set that was Clinton versus Dole, back when that election happened in the 90s. The art style was very reminiscent of a political cartoon or caricature, so they certainly stood out. Some more modern era sets had Barack Obama versus John McCain, there with the red and the blue side and then some 3D printed ones that displayed Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. And a little more economically friendly, there was this set made totally out of paper. Honestly, if I learned one thing here, it was that you're able to make chess pieces out of pretty much any material you want. As long as you got a good idea for it, you can make it happen. 
I noticed a lot of people certainly favored the over-exaggerated caricature style when they were displaying things, even all the way back to Nixon's day. It seems the political passion between the two sides, Republicans versus Democrats, has really spawned novelty chess sets for pretty much as long as there's been different elections. It makes for a really good, easy, clear-cut one side versus the other, and throws it into a really fun game. But I feel like the strategies there are very similar to what's used in politics. Some of these old illustrations and articles show you just how far back they were making these similes with chess and politics, the way that you've got to always be thinking two, three, four steps ahead, whatever it takes to get that checkmate. They also made a strong point of showing you just where chess and politics had directly intercrossed such as this time when a young prodigy was brought to Washington, D.C. to show off his skills to everybody. Even pop culture has been filled with different references between politics and chess. Advertisements, comic books, you name it. The correlation has been drawn and displayed for the whole world to see. Of course, it's not just modern-day politics that's gotten this treatment. People have looked to ancient civilizations pretty much any time that there's been a political difference and been able to use that for inspiration to create new chess pieces and display the conflict in a more simple and manageable way with a the game. These figures were probably some of my favorites just for how unique and detailed they really looked. You could see all the little things in their faces. They were just really, really cool. Though there were plenty of oddball ones too, such as these paper triangles used to represent the different sides, and then just some very plain, regular, transportable chess pieces. This one was actually the most current election so far that Biden hadn't even been made yet as the one to stand on the other side because they didn't know that he'd be running for the Democrats. Political cartoons used chess very liberally. They were able to make a lot of different points with that. And then here were some more of those 3D printed ones, which is actually a really cool concept, I think, for making some fast, quick chess pieces or really any kind of game board pieces that you can print up and have ready whenever you need it. I think one of the reasons chess is used so frequently is it's one of the very few games or leisure activities out there that everybody knows about. Even if you don't know how to play chess, you're aware of what it is and kind of the basic concept of what's trying to go on. Few things have been able to replicate this worldwide success like chess has. Funny enough, chess has actually been mentioned and honored by several presidents throughout the centuries. These are different letters and proclamations from presidents either congratulating U.S. chess teams, declaring different days as National Chess Day, and just overall showing appreciation for this wonderful game and the people who play it. As a matter of fact, several kings, heads of state, presidents have all really enjoyed chess and several of them have played themselves pretty frequently. A little bit more about that later. Whether they themselves played or not though, a lot of them have honored chess champions that have come from their country or visiting ones from other places. So these were pictures of higher up political figures posing and meeting big time figures from the world of chess. It's got to be quite a whirlwind experience when you end up getting to meet the president purely on how great you are at playing chess. This eye-catching wall showed you some stuff that went out back in the 70s just to kind of promote chess a little bit. Showed a little bit about it and how it also intersects with that very popular political world, selling those novelty chess sets again. And a little button here. 
There was even a little bit about an old chess magazine. Right here, volume 27, written in October of 1972. The political stuff was very interesting, but what about the actual chess hall of fame? What was it, and how did people get into it? What did it take to be a part of this amazing club? Well, they had a display ready to answer that exact question. This wall helpfully explained about the World and U.S. Halls of Fame, the years they were founded, and right next to it was another wall that talked about how people were chosen, what it took to become a member, and then the committee and committee members that helped make those very important decisions of who was going to be honored in these hallowed halls. Then you could use this giant tablet wall to actually scroll through and see all the current members of the World Chess Hall of Fame. Not only were you able to look up the different names and see pictures of them and the dates they were inducted, but you could even bring up some of their most famous games and it would play out exactly what had happened, what moves were made, and how they won some of those signature games that had actually won them admittance into the Chess Hall of Fame. So if you ever wanted to recreate a famous game or see exactly what happened, this was the perfect place to do that. You could access it and watch it and see the genius at work. I could have stayed here for hours just watching the different strategies play out. Then, to tie back in with the political background of everything, they had a huge list of all the presidents and whether or not they were known to be chess players. George Washington, he was a chess player, it says. But you didn't have to pick him. You could scroll through and decide who exactly you wanted to find out more about. Such as good old James Garfield here known chess player. I really like that they also put a little you know, paragraph there that told you why they knew they were a chess player, what their thoughts were. Theodore Roosevelt, known chess player. That does not surprise me in the least. Back to the board. Scrolling through. Let's see. Oh, let's pull up uh, Abraham Lincoln. Let's see. It says here, according to this, Abraham Lincoln known chess player. Again, not a president that it surprises me at all that he was a chess player. But let's do something a little more modern. Scroll down here. Oh, there's George again. There we go. Donald Trump. There is no evidence that he plays chess. suppose it's hard to find time to play games when you're running businesses, but let's see. Barack Obama. He was a known chess player. Very interesting. Then you simply had to visit the gift shop before you left. You could buy a beautiful chess set of your own to take home and start mastering the game yourself. Countless books that would help you get to that level to someday maybe be here yourself. And some wonderful shirts. I really liked the Check Yourself shirt. Very amusing. It was really cool seeing all these different chess things. Oh, and the actual certificate for the world's largest chess piece. And right across from the World Chess Hall of Fame, you had this, the St. Louis Chess Club, a place where like-minded people and lovers of the game could all come together to practice their moves, relax, and just kind of hang out and play chess together. It was a really cool looking place. I love that kind of vintage feel to it. They had the old timey sign here. We had to go inside and check it out. Here was a key to the city that they actually had received, as well as a silver YouTube button. So make sure you check out their YouTube channel if you get a chance. There was also some more books here, and then some shirts from a couple of the tournaments that they'd been out to, which I thought was really neat. And then pictures and trophies of members who'd gone on to win those big tournaments and brought the gold home to good old St. Louis. And of course, you could always just sit down and play a nice, friendly game of chess. Ultimately, I think chess is such a legendary game because it's such a great metaphor for life itself. Well, my name is David, and this has been Abnormal Voyages. Thanks for tagging along. We'll see you next time.
watching.